Well, Gary, what can you say about that? No, it was an outstanding, an outstanding team performance. Never just mind an away performance. Um, if you played like that at home, you'd be delighted. We were, we were very good. I think our um, energy and our work rate to get the ball back was the foundation of why we won the game. I thought we won all the first balls, all the second balls. We were up on it. So all the ugly side of the game we'd done. And then we uh, we played some really nice football as well. So all in all, I'm re really happy man tonight. Can you probably get much better performance than that? I don't think so. You know, I think when you think about the team that we're playing, the opposition, uh, because they are, I, I don't really look at what people say. You know, that is a good team of players that they've got, and they've got a good management team, and they will come good. Mark my words, they'll come good. So it, it was just trying to stress the players that because of had an indifferent start in the league, not to think that it was going to be any easier than it ever is coming to Falkirk. And the players listened, and the things that we worked on in training, i.e. Tappy getting his distance, he's right, which we maybe didn't get right at Dundee United. He intercepts the ball, he breaks forward, we get the second goal. Very pleasing as a manager when you've worked on something on the training ground and you score for it. We got another goal for a set play that we've worked on. So, no, I, there's no negatives to today for me. Never gave Falkirk a chance to settle, really, did you? No, but I think, you know, when you're playing such an attacking team, it's to get the ball forward and we'll make the other team defend. And, uh, you know, if you look at the, the penalty... It was just a, a, a good pass for Jordan just into an area that we had worked on and the pace of London and Chris Kane, that's why we went with him today. It was a plan to try and get in behind Falkirk and it worked. And uh, no, it's just it's really, really, really proud of the players today. It's uh, probably the best one that I've had in my time as a manager. Different class. Goals coming at good times as well? Perfect times because we knew today, you know, Peter had a little bit of a blast at his players and they would be coming out trying to prove him wrong and prove to the fans that they are good players and a good team. And we got a goal, I think, within the first couple of minutes. Then the game, if there's ever a time to score, you maybe score a little bit too early. Falkirk come, they start growing back in the game without creating many chances, I think. Uh, Rory Loy had one that he headed over the bar for a long throw, but the problems that we were getting was just the long throw, really. There was nothing really in open play that was hurting us. And we scored a great goal at the second half, a great breakaway, good ball for London, Dobes finishes off and you're thinking great goal right on half time and Dobes also Dobes also um gets up sorry. Is uh, is uh, Dobes also um up and running so I'm delighted about that. And then we knew that they would come and have a go and we trade to the players, look, it's important we don't concede a goal in the first 20, 25 minutes of the second half and give them something to come for. But I did say to them, I'm always comfortable, you're going to get chances, albeit the goal that he scored after 18 seconds, you'll, uh, you'll know uh, goal of the season already, or a contender, unbelievable. And then as I say, London gets in behind penalty, he gets his hat trick. And uh, if you want, I don't really want to talk about because it it's wrong to say any negative, but... I'm disappointed that, that for the defenders in Ireland that never got a clean sheet and that's all I really want to say negative about the performance. As you say there, Dobes back up and running. He's been frustrated with himself really in the last few weeks, so yeah, made up for it today. Yeah, listen, I've told I said this and it's no disrespect to my strikers and other he's a top striker in the league. And it was only a matter of time when he got up to scoring goals. And he is frustrated because he's a type of lad that when he doesn't score and trainer hits a post, he's he does he, he can visit visibly see him, he's angry with himself. But uh, you know, I just think that now that we should enjoy it because he's uh, he's fit, he's as fit as he's been, he's as light as he's been. He seems to be playing football with a smile on his face. So for me, as his manager and the Queen of the South fans, I think we should just enjoy having him. He'll obviously walk off. He has walked off with the match ball today for his hat trick. But Jason Kerr coming in and no, listen, it was a, that one there. Actually, I have to be honest. Uh, on Thursday, Danny and Sean Rooney were in the team. And Danny hurt his, um, Danny got a little nick and we decided not to take a chance and we named that yesterday. So we named the team and Danny wasn't in it. Callum came in who I thought done really well, you know, he's been a little bit frustrated being in and out the team. But I thought today was by far his best performance, you know, and he got 60, 65 minutes and his, ta his calf tightened up. But I think that'll do him the world of good. Not so much the, f the fitness and that, but in his head that he's came to a, a really tough venue and he's played really well for 65 minutes. It's probably the first time this season that he'll feel that he's really contributed to the team. So that should help us going forward with Tappy because I feel for him a little bit. John and Kai have done ever so well and he's been out of football for two years and he needs five or six games in a row and I've not been able to give him it. So I do feel for him because of having long-term injuries myself. You need to a run of games to get back. So delighted for him. Uh, I can't even remember how I got onto that. What were you asking me there? <laughs> I can't even remember myself now. Um, I think it was Jason Kerr coming uh, yeah, in. Yeah, and on Friday, 
Sean Rooney was in the team and he was training and he felt something and he came in today and he was wanting to give it a go but he could say that he could still just feel it in the in the war in the in the, in his fitness test and I made the decision to change. I didn't think it would be fair to Sean to come out and do the warm up, maybe break down and then Jason's only getting forty minutes to prepare. We had told Jason yesterday that if Sean was unavailable he would play, so I think that helped him. Told him when he got on at quarter past one and I have to be honest, I thought him and Brownlee were outstanding. You know, we've got three really, really, really good centre halves at the club just now. Uh, and everybody's competition for places, you know, I had to leave Dell out. And just on that, you know, it, it was a very difficult thing to do. And I, I told Dell on Thursday my reasons, and he was disappointed because he expected to play. Uh, and he should expect to play because he had p- scored the goals. But I told him right at the start of the season it would be horses for courses. I explained my reasons to Dell. And as a true professional he is, he just says, Gaffer, listen, I, res- I respect your decision. I'll be ready to play on Saturday. He trained brilliantly yesterday and he came on the day and he put his cell about and he hasn't been sulking in the change room. And it's probably an example to all younger players or people that are maybe out the team how you've got to conduct yourself when you're disappointed. He's been a credit to his cell this week. Of course as well, you know, you've said you're going to use the squad, but do you think that now that there are competitions for places that yeah. it's helped the squad? Well, I think if you look at Dill as an example, he scored three in his last four games and he's found himself no playing today. I think when you do that, people go, you know, anybody could be left out. So even if you got a clean sheet, a centre-half maybe think, I maybe think Jason, for example, is better suited to play in a game than Darren. Or I maybe think Callum and uh, Darren are better than Jason for a certain game, and they've got to buy into that. And if you can't get them to buy into it, and if it's about the individuals, then you're never got to be successful as a team. And just now, I feel we're in a good place. We're learning, but I think there's improvement for, it. especially you mentioned earlier, the Betfred Cup games. But we can't get carried away. You know, it's a great start, nine points. Um, but they should be happy with ourselves tonight. They should be really happy. The performance and the result today should surely make people sit up and go, as you said to me earlier on, wow. It wasn't so much for people to sit up and say wow, it was just me, you know, I, I knew there was potential, I, I wasn't sure if we were quite ready to deliver a performance like that because we are still such a young group. Um, and that's why it was like the wow, because it came so early, it's now up to us to try and maintain that, but I've been in football long enough to it's very difficult to play like that every week, but what we have done is we've set a standard that we can get to. But as I say, it all comes down to the hard work, our shape, the training work that we've done during the week. Allowed us to always get the ball back for Falkirk, never really be able to threaten us. And that allowed us then to get the ball forward quickly. And as I say, when you've got Dell, Linden, eh, Kano, who I'm sure a goal will come, he's working ever so hard, Dobes. And I actually thought Ross Ferguson done really, really well. We've had to be patient, he's had a lot of injuries in pre-season, but with his physical presence and that, I thought he'd done really well for the 10 or 12 minutes he was on today. So... All in all, it's a good day. I'm going to enjoy this one, uh, just to the point that normally I'm on to the next game, but I'm going to enjoy it and then I'll think about Berwick on Monday. I've got to say you have got a break now from the league, so... Yeah, you... but I want to keep the momentum, you know, I want to... There'll be people itching to play, you know, Andy Sterling will be desperate in a game, you know, I think Andy will be playing next week, I think I'm quite comfortable in saying that. Andy needs a game now, he's training ever so well, but I can't get him in the team because the lads are doing so well. So we need to get Andy some game time, there'll be one or two others, obviously Jason's away which he'll be frustrated about because he'd have been wanting to build on that and he would probably have played at Berwick. Alan as I say has been nursing along so we'll see how he is. So there'll probably be two or three changes but again I'm, I don't want to disrespect Berwick, disrespect the competition, be making seven or eight changes, that definitely won't happen. And as you see you want to keep the momentum going so yeah, it's, a, it's a game that you want to keep building on and keep going in that competition? Just, old cliche each game at a time but the longer the more games you can go undefeated the more the confidence grows so that's what we'll try and do and for that our next game is Berwick so we need to try and get a, a positive result then and get into the next round of the cup